Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. Welcome to another Antenna in the Antenna series. I'm KY4BDP, Brian. For Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, this is El Cara on the road. Well, today I'm out here in Edison, New Jersey, once again, and uh, at the hotel, as I usually am. And today I thought, well, it might be just dry enough to go ahead and set up the Soda Beams Band Hopper 4 dipole. Now, what's really interesting about this antenna is that you could probably build it yourself. In fact, Chris and I have looked it over. It's a wonderful build, and you can tell a lot of thought went into it to make it as light as possible. Great if you're doing poda, soda, or in my case, hoda. In any event, uh, we're going to show you how, or I'm going to show you how to set up this antenna, and if we're lucky, we'll get a chance to hook it up to the radio and get a chance to see if we can hear some traffic out there on 20 meters. So that's what we're going to try this afternoon. Uh, please stay tuned. Uh, in the next uh, section here, we're going to uh, speed up the video so you can see me putting up the antenna as quickly as possible uh, and uh, with a little bit of music, so make it uh, hopefully a little bit entertaining. And then I'll come back, we'll hook it up to the radio, and we'll have a little bit of fun. See you in just a few minutes. <laughs> And welcome back. It takes about 10 minutes to set up the soda beam. If you're really doing it for the very first time, maybe 15. Because one of the things I had to learn was to get the dipole wires out, connect one, then just take the other one out of ways, then take the middle one, bring it back, and then actually connect it to the uh, telescopic mast and take it all the way up so that you can get an idea of where your center line is, then stake that. Uh, uh, take the mast down, stake that, and then take your pole back up. It'll actually stay up with just two of the guy lines, then go and stake your last one. So once you get a little bit of practice, it doesn't take as long. Now that it's up, and right now I've got it basically headed in an east-west direction, which means I'm going to be picking up signals much further west. I'm, on, uh, I'm in New Jersey, so I'm not going to pick as many up to the east uh, as I would say maybe a north-south direction. Uh, where you might want to hit Florida and further south to Puerto Rico all the way up into Canada. For now, let's see how it does east-west direction and I think I've got a signal here pretty clear and that'll give you an idea of what we're listening to. Together with the DX40, DF1. Same station we had when we were a kid. So, uh, about this particular signal is going in and out about S3 all the way up to an S8. So about a 5359, anyway, uh, uh, occasionally above a 59. So, but it's clear, it's very clear. Let's see if we can tune something else in. So a second signal coming in really well. The thing I love about the soda beam is the, given that it's a full wave, it is uh, and it's built to be resonant on 
80, 40, 30, 20. Uh, you just adjust the clips on the wire to get your additional length that you need for whatever band you happen to be listening to. So right now, I have none of the clips that connect the wire segments together connected. And that way I can listen to 20 meters, which would come in a little bit better at this point during the day. If I were listening at night, I would start connecting the clips on each side to lengthen my wire or my dipole. So that way I could listen to 40 and possibly 80. I don't use 30 very much right now, but 40 a lot. In fact, I made a connection last night with this exact same antenna to Ontario, Canada, in a e, uh, north-south orientation as far as uh, pointed east-west, but communicating lobes out north-south. So, like I said, it works out really well. I really enjoyed it. It's lightweight. You could put this into a backpack, no problem. It might weigh a pound and a half, somewhere in that ballpark. And as long as you have the space, that's the biggest drawback to this particular antenna, is the room that you need to extend it out into its uh, full length. But if you've got that, there really isn't anything better for soda, poda, and hoda type activations, if you will. Well, let's go ahead and close out the video. I hope you've enjoyed this soda beam band hopper uh, antenna video. We hope that content like this encourages you to go out and get something similar. Get out there and travel. Get out there and take your radio when you travel. Uh, and if you like these videos, make sure that you like the video. Subscribe to our channel. That's a big help to us right now as we grow. Uh, and make sure you comment. If there are other antennas that you think we should cover in a travel portable scenario, let us know. Uh, we've got some other antennas coming out as well as a part of the series and maybe will capture and, uh, and uh, present one of the antennas you like to use. I'm KY4BDP, Brian, for El Cara on the road, and I hope you enjoyed the video. 73.